Well, thanks. So let's get started. So um, let's go ahead and start this morning. Let's start on our backs. All right. I, I can't hear okay. you, Monty. I don't know what's going on with the sound. I'm okay. not hearing any voices. Okay. Well, I was keep, having a problem with that earlier. I'll keep talking. Tell me when you can hear. Is that any better at all? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. It's crackly, but I can hear you. Okay. Hmm. Can we, is that, how about now, if I just talk a little bit louder from here, will that work? Yes, that's okay. good. Okay. Let me turn that. It's okay. going to be hot. Turn this that's fine. So let's start out on our backs. And um, just stretch out. Let your body rest down into the mat. Close your eyes or you can find a drifty up on the ceiling above you. And let yourself begin to just scan your body from your toes moving up through your feet, your legs, and so on up. And bring your attention to that plane of contact where your body is touching the mat, your shoulder blades, sacrum wherever those touch points are. And then become aware of that support. And then bring a little bit of uh, energy into your body. So gently draw your belly into your spine, not really locking it down, but just a gentle uh, contraction there of those muscles. And then flex your feet, again gently, just so that your calves and your quads and your hamstrings are slightly activated. And then extend your arms up overhead. Interlace your fingers. Stretch back. Maybe interlace your fingers all except for your pointer fingers. Stretch up. And then as your shoulders come up by your ears, just set your shoulder blades back down on the mat. You have a little bit of length here. And then begin to stretch over to your right side. So draw those clasped hands over to your right. Create a little bit of side body opening. Feet stay flexed as if you were standing doing this. Belly stays locked. Both shoulder blades stay on the ground. Maybe you sort of walk your shoulder blades over to get a little bit more side stretch. And breathe right here. Without forcing, just invite some length in through the spine and especially through your left side body. And then draw your body back into center. And Pause for a breath in the center, get nice and long. Shoulders back up by your ears and press down, and then begin to draw everything over to the left side. Feet flexed, creating a big sort of C shape here with your body. Feet can either stay in the center of the mat, or you can, if you want, begin to walk them over to the left so that you're legs and arms are going off to the left side of the mat to sort of intensify that stretch. Allow the right shoulder blade to settle into the mat. Belly button into the spine a little bit more. And inhale, come all the way back up to center. Find a dead bug pose. So extend your legs straight up. Flex your feet, extend your arms straight up. And this is the time we're gonna go ahead and lock the belly. Take that contraction, that easy contraction, and lock it down. And notice what happens with your lumbar spine. Maybe it presses a little bit more firmly into the mat. Flex those feet, press the heels up towards the sky, and send the arms in front of you, but let the shoulders that were by your ears come back down onto your back. And we're going to pulse up with our chest and our arms just five times. So five, four, three, two, one. And bring those shoulders back down. Pull your knees into your chest. Give them a big hug. 
Maybe bring your forehead up to your kneecaps. Draw in a little bit tighter. And then roll backward and forward and come up to a seat. So find an easy cross leg position. Sit nice and tall, press your sitting bones down into the mat. And we're gonna work on some um, cats and cows from a seated position. So on your inhale, come into that cow pose. Send your shoulder blades back, looking at the sky. And on your exhale, round your back. Look down to your ankles. And let's work through that about four more times. Inhale, open up, shoulders down and away from your ears. Exhale, round. Move with your breath. Articulating the vertebrae and being aware of that with each move. Smooth transition from cow to cat. And then come back up to seated. So take your um, right hand, put it on your left knee, take your left palm and place it behind you and put it on a block if uh, that makes it a little bit better. Press down with that back hand to get length in your spine and then press forward with the right hand and gently twist over and looking over your left shoulder. A little flexion in that spine, a little twist. Make the twist as much as possible. Come from the spot right behind your belly button. And back into center. Take a breath, sit nice and tall with your hands on your knees. You hear the kids playing basketball behind Jamie. Not the quietest yoga and, practice. It's all right. And then look back over your right shoulder, pressing your left hand down on that knee and grounding your right palm behind you, either on the floor or on the block. In India, they do yoga in the market, and there are people and cows and shopkeepers and all that stuff all around them. So I think we can stand 10 or 12 <laughs> excited team basketball players, or free team, whatever they are. Come back into center. And then make your way, um, make your way forward into tabletop. We're not going to be here very long. So Liz, if this is not what you need, modify if um, maybe by not just looking down, maybe look into the front of your mat a little bit, make it comfortable. Like I said, we're not gonna be here too long. Inhale, lift your right arm, draw the shoulder blade back onto your back, extend your left leg. Turn those toes down and draw a line of energy from the tips of your right fingers to the sole of your left foot. Draw in a little bit more in your belly, reach nice and long, and then on your exhale, open it out to the side. Awkward airplane, do that three more times. Inhale for length, exhale to open. Inhale for length, exhale, open wide. Inhale for length, exhale, open, stay here and then gently set that left foot down, come up onto your knee and the blade of that right foot. So we're gonna work on a little bit more side body opening and twisting from this gate pose, and then we're gonna work our way to, the, to our feet. So inhale, reach up nice and long, and on your exhale, let your left hand slide down your left shin toward the blade of that left foot, roll your right shoulder back, look up, to the ceiling under that right arm. Hold for another breath. Inhale, come up to center. Exhale, release to the other side. Let your bicep, left bicep, come by your ear. Fingers to a block or to the floor. Reach long, press, use the opposing forces here. Press the blade of that left foot into the floor. Stretch into that left side body. Inhale, come all the way back up. Reach up, look up, and then find your tabletop again. Plant your knees under your hips, your wrists, underneath your shoulders, belly into your spine. Gaze goes where it needs to go. Extend your left arm forward, right leg back. And draw energy in here with awareness uh, right around your belly button into that uh, Uddiyana Bandha. Turn your toes down. Inhale for length. Exhale, open it out here. Inhale, get long. 
Exhale, open. Inhale for length. Exhale, open. Let's do one more. Nice and long. Open it to the side. Drop that right foot down. Come up to gate pose. So find your foundation, pressing that right foot into the mat or into the floor. Left knee comes down under your hip. Nice and tall. Reach up long, shoulders down your back. And then on your exhale, go to your right. Left shoulder blade on your back, right hand slides down your calf towards your ankle. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, go to the left side. Right bicep by your ear. Hold here for a breath. Open up, up in your heart towards the sky. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, take it back over to the right. Left shoulder blade going back. Keep that foundation strong. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, back to the left. Last time here, make it something that helps you. Make it strong, big stretch. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, release your hands back down. Find your tabletop and then press the tops of your feet into the mat. Draw your knees off the floor. Roll over your toes, press into down dog. Walk your feet to the top of the mat. Lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up. Rise up. Bring your hands down by the or bring your hands down by the center of your heart. Get your shoulders open here. So you're going to work through some flows without down dog. So I'm going to make this up as I go along. So it may be a little, um, a little bit choppy, but that's okay. So if you're at the top of your of your mat, I want you to take a step back with your left foot, three quarters of the way back on your mat. Come in, turn the left foot down at a 45 degree angle, so that you're in a warrior one. Settle in. It's not as bad as a crescent lunge. Step your right foot a little bit farther forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sit down nice and deep here. Draw that left hip forward and extend your arms up nice and tall. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale out for two. Inhale, come back up for one. Exhale for two. Reach back for peaceful warrior. Get deeper in that right knee. Roll that right hip under. Reach back, look up, and then find your extended side ankle. Bring your left forearm to the right thigh or fingers down to the mat or to a block. You can choose to extend your left arm straight up or bring it to touch your bicep touching your left ear. Choose one or the other. Roll the right hip under your left. And even in the stillness, find energy as you press into the earth with the heel of your right foot, the blade of your left foot. Come out of this, come into peaceful warrior, keep the bend in the knee. Come back to warrior two, warrior one, and then step your left foot up to the top of the mat, bring your arms down by your side. Draw your belly in your spine. And then reverse the process. Step your right foot back, three quarters of the way on the mat. Set the right foot off to the right of the left heel so that your feet are uh, on railroad tracks. Settle in nice and deep here. Press into the blade of your back foot. Shoulders square to the front of the mat. Hips square to the front of the mat. Sink in. Pick your toes up. Spread them wide. Set them down. Sink a little deeper. Internally rotate your thighs as you squeeze your legs towards the center, but press your feet in opposite directions. Now open out into two. You need to scoop that foot over so your feet are aligned here. You can. And back into one. Find something new each time that we switch each breath that we take in the pose, even if we're stationary. Open it out to two. Reach back for peaceful warrior. Long stretch in that left side body. We're working on those sides a lot today. And then transition. Is the extended side angle. 
your version if you're looking for a bind can take it. Fingers to the block, to the mat, whatever suits you. Keep working that left hip even more underneath you. Right hip rolls back on top of the left. On your inhale, come all the way back up. Peaceful warrior. Warrior two. Let your shoulders settle down away from your ears. Warrior one. And then step back up to the top of the mat. Bring your arms down by your sides. Step your feet out. Um, almost mats width. Toes turned out at 30 to 45 degrees. And find a squat here. So best effort to keep your spine as straight as possible. So mine is going to start to go forward from about this point. So that's where I'm going to stop right here. Hands can be on your knees. Hands can be at heart center. And continue to sink down. Find your grist to your gaze point. Roll back into the blades of your feet. If you're really tilting forward, you can come up onto the balls of your feet. It's going to really engage those quads a lot more. Settle in. Two more breaths right here. On your inhale, press your feet into the floor. Stand up into star. Open up, look up, and then we're going to settle right back down into that squat. We're going to do about three or four more of these. We're going to hold for about two or three breaths at the bottom. And two or three breaths at the top. Here we go. For another breath. Exhale. All the way down. What can you find new here? Breathing into those hips. Allows them to sink a little bit deeper. Inhaling. All the way back up. Open your heart. Tuck your belly. Lean back. Open up. Last time. Down into your squat, settle in. For the last time for this series, tuck your tailbone. While we're here, let's work on a little bit of a twist. So go ahead and plant your right hand in front of you. Reach your left hand up. Exhale, switch sides. Put the right hand up. Exhale, bring it back down. And on your inhale, come all the way back up to your star. And then on your exhale, bring your arms down by your sides. Bring your feet back in, toes touching or close to toes touching. Let's work through a, um, a few balance and hip opening poses. So stand nice and tall. And come into stork pose. So lift your arms, shoulders down your back. Lift that right knee up nice and high. Belly comes in tight against your spine. Inhale, extend that leg out. Exhale, bring it back in two more times. Inhale, extend out, press the wall across the room away from you. Inhale, come back up, high knee. In inhale, extend. I guess it's exhale, extend. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, set it all back down. Let it go. Breath in and out. You're right, it is getting hot in here. Other side, stork pose, lift the knee, extend your arms. Press that right foot into the floor, draw into your core. We've energized it, so use it now. Inhale, extend, exhale, bring it back in and lift. Two more times. Lift it up a little higher, and then set it all back down. A breath in and a breath out. And bring your uh, right foot across your left uh, quad. Find a figure four position here. Okay. So bring your hands to the center of your heart and then begin to sink your hips down. So find your drishti. If you need a piece of furniture or something to steady you, use it. Flex that right foot. And find that, that 
duality between the balance and the opening in that right hip. If you fall out, just come back in. Stick a little deeper if you can. Inhale, come all the way back up. <laughs> and let it go. Open your heart. Set your foot. Set your drishti. Yeah. Let's do the other side. So bring that left ankle across. Flex the foot. Belly comes in. Hands come to heart center. You can connect there. Thumb to sternum. And begin to settle in. Yeah. Focus on one spot, it's fed by your breath, smooth, even, through jai breath. Sink a little deeper if you can, or stay right where you are. And inhale, come all the way back out. Good. Exhale, set it down. Take any movement that you need. Set your feet on 12 o'clock. Shoulder blades come on your back. Let's open your quads just a little bit with a dancer pose. So extend your left arm out, reach your right, right hand back, grab the inside of your foot or ankle, and then bring your knee back down. And so kick back and reach forward. Kick back and reach forward. Kick more. Reach more. Tilt over and look over those left fingers, and inhale, come back. Arms back down by your sides. And switch sides. The right arm extends up nice and tall. Shoulder blade comes down where it's supposed to go on your back. Left hand, bring it to the inside of that left foot or ankle. And then press the knee down, kick the foot back. Reach the fingers forward. Transition the drishti to right over your right middle finger. Kick back a little bit more. Reach forward a little bit more. And then on your inhale, come all the way back up. Let it go. Stand nice and tall. You want to close your eyes, move your feet just a little bit. Open your eyes. Um, find eagle pose. So from this tall, um, equal standing pose, wrap your right leg over and your right arm under or opposite shoulders with your palms, whatever's working for you. And then elbows come up to shoulder height. Sink your hips down. Squeeze your legs together. Sink a little bit more. Hold for another breath. Inhale, come all the way back up. Switch sides, ground your right foot, wrap your left leg. Left arm comes under your right, press your palms together if you've got that ability. And then squeezing together, ground, thigh on thigh, right foot into the earth. Sink a little bit more. Inhale, all the way back up. So, um, Let's work our way down to the mat. Let's find chair pose. Sit nice and deep here. Bring your hands together at the center of your heart. Hook to your right side. Left elbow over right thigh. Twist. Take your tailbone lower than your heart. And then come up on your toes. Keep your drishti fixed over to the side. Sink your hips a little bit more. And then best effort, keep your hips where they are. Ground your heels in. If you want to open your arms nice and wide here, you can. Draw your belly into your spine. Inhale, come back up. Chair for sit nice and deep. And then stay right in that chair, in that seat. Switch to the other side. Hook your right elbow outside your left thigh. Draw your belly into your spine. And draw your sternum even with your thumb knuckles. And come up on your toes. Drop your hips. Drop your hips. And then keep your hips where they are as best you can. And open your arms. Inhale, come back up to chair pose. Come up onto your toes. Sit down, 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 down. And roll back onto your back. 
Find a happy baby. So shoulders and sacrum press into the mat, belly draws in. Grab the outside edges of your feet or your ankles. Press your tailbone down towards the floor. Press your shoulders down towards the floor. And then transition to butterfly. Just bring the soles of your feet together. Flex both feet. And then pull those feet in, arches of your feet in towards your heart. Be respectful of your knees. If you feel anything, any pain at all in your knees, back it out. And release. Bring your feet down to the floor, knees bent. Um, and let's start with the bridge pose. We're going to work through some combination of back bend and hip opening. So we'll start in a traditional bridge. So bring your feet in close to your glutes, your sitting bones. Lift up, roll your shoulder blades together, interlace your fingers, and press your arms and shoulders in. Continue to lift your hips. You're going to stay here about three or four breaths. Visualize the inside of your thighs. Press them down towards the floor. Press all four corners of your feet into the mat. Press your shoulders into the mat. Tuck your chin to create some space in the back of your neck. Hold for one more breath. And then on your exhale, bring it all the way down. So let your spine settle into the mat. And for this round, cross your right leg over your left, just like you did in that figure four tree earlier. And so I want you to take your hands this time and instead of interlacing them, at first, press them down into the mat. Lift your hips, press into the mat. And now once your hips are up, if you want to interlace your fingers, go for it. And then press your hips up as you press that right knee back down towards the floor. You can determine the intensity that you want with this. Keep lifting the hips, pressing the right knee down. And on your exhale, release all the way down to the mat. And from right here, find pigeon on your back. Just take the right hand, slip it through the hole, made with your legs, flex the feet, and pull down. You're in control here, so find your edge. Sensation maybe at a six, seven, no higher. You can press that right elbow out into your right knee. Use this pose as a tool to clear out your hips and for a practice of just staying in sensation. We've all been in the daily practice of that since the middle of March in a different way. Working through it in our bodies like this, I think, for me, at least translates a little bit more into the ability to be with whatever is going on. Release. Bring that left foot down to the mat. Keep your right foot crossed over and find a gentle twist. So let your knees drop over to the left side, keeping your feet right here. So that left knee is going to hit the floor. The right foot is on the floor. And you can spread your arms out into cactus or into a T and look the other way. Now this is a gentler stretch than we sometimes take um, in a spinal twist. And I want you to just notice what's going on in the right side. And if you need a little bit more sensation, you can lift the knees up towards the top of your mat, staying on the left side. Hold for another breath or two. Inhale, come back up, right, uncross your legs. Take a regular bridge pose just for clearing. So pressing your feet into the mat, lifting up, interlacing your fingers if you want. If you want more here, we're gonna be here just three or four breaths. So you can come up on your toes, you can lift one leg or the other. I'm choosing to keep grounded, my feet into the mat, belly in, hips up, chin tucked. 
And then on your next exhale, come all the way back down to the floor. Cross the left leg over, left ankle hangs over that right thigh. Now draw your belly in, press into the mat, lift up, then transition to your interlaced fingers and send your hips up. Press that left knee down. So you're opening your hips up from that perspective as you press your hips high. Press down with all four corners of your right foot. Hold for another breath. And then exhale. Release it all the way down to the floor. And then uh, find your pigeon here on your back. Send that left hand through, interlace in front of your shin or behind your thigh. Pull in, flex the left foot, press the left knee away from you. My legs are getting sweaty, so it takes a little bit more intention and engagement with the muscles not to slide off. Hold for another breath. Make it one more after that. And release. Keep your legs crossed. Drop the, that left foot over to the right side. Find your cactus arms or your T arms, whatever feels better for you. Send your gaze to the left as your knee and foot make contact with the floor on the right. And again, if you want more, just bring that knee up a little bit and then keep working that left hip down towards the floor. Actually, that's not right. Keep bringing the left hip up because you want to keep the stretch in the left side. Working over to your left. And on the inhale, come all the way back up. Ground both feet. And one final back bend of your choice. I'm going to offer a wheel if you want to go big. You can do another bridge, or you can do a supported bridge if you have a block or anything that you can use for a block. So for wheel, feet come into bridge position, hands come by your ears, fingers point down, and push down to come up. Best effort to straighten your arms. Belly comes into your spine, hips go up. Hold for three, two, one, and release it. Come all the way down. Take a brief rest here in Sukta Baddha Kanasta, bringing the soles of your feet to touch. Knees drop up into the side, one hand on your belly, one hand on the heart. And then just a little bit of core stability work. Open your eyes if they were closed. Pull your knees into your chest, rock up into Navasana, into boat pose. So do a boat pose that suits you today. Feet grounded, knees bent, knees bent, feet suspended in air. You can give yourself a little support behind your thighs, arms straight, maybe even legs straight. You lift in your heart up, and then exhale into canoe. Inhale back up into boat. Exhale, canoe, boat, and canoe. Now in this canoe, reach your arms over your head. Stay as still as you can here. It's going to change your balance. And then make your way back up into your final boat. Arms extend forward, and then plant your feet. You're done there. Nice work. Um, so we're going to work on a little bit of hamstring stretching here. So um, we're gonna fold forward just a little bit. So Liz, modify as you need. Maybe do this on your back. So we're gonna come into John Yushasana, so the seated tree pose. So bring your right foot into your left thigh. And sit up nice and tall, pressing both of your sitting bones into the mat. Turn your sternum to face that um, middle left toe. Reach your arms up. And then before you fold, really engage that leg. Flex the foot and then draw into your belly, fold. It doesn't matter where your hands go, I want you to keep your spine as straight as possible. So as you inhale, 
extend and lengthen, and as you exhale, maybe you fold a little bit, maybe not. It gives you the opportunity. Two more breaths here. And then if you want to round your back, you can round your back and bring your forehead toward your knee. Inhale, come all the way back up. Take your right hand behind you, plant it, and then press the right knee into the mat. Reach your left arm overhead to yet again get some stretch in that left side body. Press your hips forward and up. Shoulders come back, left shoulder comes back. You're opening your heart to the sky. Exhale, set it back down and switch sides. Extend your right leg, bring your left foot to that right thigh. And then once you establish that good contact with the floor and your sitting bones, pivot, turn your heart to face those middle toes. I'm gonna put my foot over here on the mat. Sit nice and tall, reach up and fold. If you have a strap here, that's a nice thing, but you can just find wherever you can grab onto. So breathe into that hamstring. So with the inhale, you have the opportunity to lengthen your spine. With the exhale, you have the opportunity to fold and to stretch the hamstring just a little bit. Incremental stretching. And then on your next exhale, if you choose, you can round your back. That'll normally give you a little bit more reach here. It allows me to touch my toes. But still, that's not necessary. It doesn't matter where your hands are. On your inhale, come up. Bring that left palm behind your tailbone. Press the left knee down, the blade of the right foot into the mat, right shoulder comes back open, a big stretch. Powerful planning into the earth's going on here. Open your heart and exhale. Bring it all back down. Um, from here, let's do one more seated forward falls. On the seated staff pose, both legs extend out in front, shoulders onto your back, heart lifts. And then I want you to, this time instead of reaching up, I want you to keep your hands on your heart, I mean on your hips, and shift forward. Now you're probably not going to go far here, but I want you to feel that in your hamstrings. You probably go farther than I'm going. In your hamstrings and your glutes. You can just sit with that. Back up to seated. If you have a block that you want to slide under your sitting bones or a blanket or something like that, you can do that. And then this time, do extend your arms up and then on your exhale, fold. So the dynamics of the stretch in your hamstring, this feels different to me. I feel a little bit lower in my hamstrings than I do the John Yu Trishasana. So just notice. Spine straight, straight as you can for two more breaths. And then if you choose, round your back. Bring your forehead down to your knees. And release. Find your um, reverse plank. So point your toes, press your hands into the mat under your shoulders. And take a look at your um, feet as you do this, because as you lift your hips, your toes are gonna come towards the floor. Keep watching them until your hips get up high enough that you can't see them, and then you can bring your gaze up to the sky. Lift your hips. Most importantly, lift your sternum. Shoulder blades roll together on your back, and then keep this position. Bend your knees. Settle your sitting bones back onto the mat. Find fish pose, Matsyasana. Check in with those toes again. Make sure they're really pointed and pressed down to the mat. Give them some stretch in the front 
of your legs, and then walk your elbows in together, lift your heart, belly in, so your heart goes up towards the sky and up towards your chin. Tuck your chin, and then when you've lifted your heart as far as you can, let your head drop back, that feels right. Keep pressing your toes forward, engaging your legs, heart lifts, and settle it all the way down onto the mat. Final spinal twist. Let's do that with uh, eagle legs. So you can take it however you want, but I'm offering eagle legs to wrap the right over the left, and then allow those knees to drop over to your left side. You might want to scoot your hips a little bit to the right. That makes that opening easier. Stretch your arms out into a T, or if you'd like to use that left hand to encourage a little opening by placing it on the outside of your right thigh. Go for that. Let your gaze go over your right fingers. Let your right shoulder settle into or toward the mat. So a few more breaths here. Just be with your breath. Notice what happens when you don't force, when you align and invite. And switch sides here. Come back to center. Plant both feet, slip, shift your hips a bit to the left. Cross your left leg over your right. Draw your knees up, drop them to the right. Open your arms into a T or cactus. Let your gaze go over your left fingers. Again, you can use your right hand to help encourage your left thigh. Or you can, or and you can, slide a block under that left knee if the knee's not coming all the way to the floor so you've got some connection, some contact, and stability there. Again, the rushing here, just noticing what's happening in your body, even in this relative stillness. There's still opportunity for opening. And then come back into center, unwrapping your legs. <clears throat> Give yourself a big squeeze. Pull your knees into your heart, maybe bringing your head up to your kneecap, draw in really tight, take a breath in, and as you exhale, squeeze in tighter, do it again, breathe in, exhale, squeeze your knees in even tighter, last one, breathe in, breathe in a little bit more and hold it, and on your exhale, extend your body out, all the way onto your mat, and take a few breaths to get yourself set up to do nothing. To be still. So arms by your sides with your palms turned up. If that feels right for you. Allow your legs to relax so your feet drop out to the side. Draw your belly in tightly against your spine and then just let it go as you breathe out. Feel yourself. Letting go from the tips of your toes to the top of your head to the tips of your fingers. Let your breath settle down into its natural rhythm. And cultivate the intention of allowing everything to just get soft and easy. and melt. Take this rest. Take your Shavasana.
without moving, let yourself become aware of your body. Just like we started practice, you notice the connection with the earth without any attempt to change it. Feel the weight of your body. Notice the other sensations that your brain and the nervous system are sending to you right now. And then begin to slowly re-enter that moving environment by bringing some motion into your fingers and to your toes. And work those movements up your arms and shoulders, up your legs and hips. You can take about four or five breaths to find yourself sitting on your mat. If you want to spend a couple breaths on your side, take that. Just with respect for and awareness of what's going on in your body as you change your orientation and come back to that easy seated position. Bring some gentle energy into your belly and your spine, let your shoulders drop. And then bring your hands together at heart center, press your thumb knuckles into your sternum, press the crown of your head toward the sky. So thank you for letting me lead you in this practice today. Thank yourself for what you've done for your body and for what you do for this community, live and virtual, whatever it looks like. Bring your thumb knuckles up to the center of your forehead. Light of me sees and honors the light in each of you. Namaste.